you may have heard this small thing called AI. And for large language models, these generative AI models, to be truly useful, they need to interact with a lot more information, so external data sources or services or tools. Until recently, that was done with something called APIs. You're probably familiar with those too. And back in 2024, Anthropic introduced a new open standard, which is Model Context Protocol. So that's really made some big differences in standardizing how applications provide the context and the information back to those large language models. Now, a really good metaphor that I keep hearing is a bit like USB ports on your PC. Now, bear with me. So MCP is a bit like the translation between you plugging in your printer or your other peripherals into a USB port on your laptop, your PC, for example, and the PC automatically connects to those peripherals automatically. Now, I know this is a lot more complex than that, but think of MCP as being this USB uh, translation between the host or an agent and other services that you need to connect into that agent. Now, if we put these two things side by side, like USBs and uh, MCP, we can see the similarities here. So we're using MCP to really look at the, uh, the translation of those services. So when it comes to MCP and the MCP protocol, that connects to external MCP servers. So we have a client to server relationship here between the agent and the MCP server. Now those servers expose capabilities. So perhaps we've got a database, an external database that we need to connect to. And we have the translation that goes from the agent through to the MCP server and access the services, which is pretty neat. And we may have other services we want to bring in. For example, an email server or another AI service that I'll show you in a little bit. Before I jump in and show you this, we really need to understand the architecture of MCP. So it addresses two real needs. So in particular, an AI agent really needs the context uh, in, in the form of contextual data, or another is to enable tools or use of tools through these agents. And it provides a standard way for agents to retrieve external content, which means things like documents or knowledge base entries or database records, those sorts of things can be executed as actions or tools, like maybe run a web search or call an external service or perform some calculations. Now, this is all done through the MCP server that I mentioned, and it advertises a bunch of what we call primitives. So let's have a look at those. So one primitive might be tools or resources or prompt templates. Now, when we're talking in context to Copilot Studio, it's going to use tools. So tools is able to call a list of the tools that the end service is able to pull in and very similar to resources and uh, prompt templates. And this is what I'm going to show you today. This might sound very similar to an API. So you're saying, Graham, why don't we just use an API in order to do this? And uh, there's a spoiler alert here. So model context protocol and APIs actually work together. So MCP can use the existing APIs to understand and discover what the function calls are on the remote end and then translate that back into something that an LLM or an agent can understand. I think the key takeaway from this, and there are many videos out there on the internet that you can have a look at, is think of traditional APIs or REST APIs, which are static. So if you wanted an AI agent or another application to understand all of the capabilities of a remote service through an API, you would have to understand the schema of, at that point in time, what the capabilities are that you can call. Remember, these applications can be changing all the time. So you really want a tool like MCP that is a bit more dynamic. And it does this at runtime as well. So as soon as the request is hit by the MCP server, it does a dynamic discovery of what function calls or tools that it can call from the remote end. Much, much better way, especially for developers and programmers, where they're not having to maintain and manage lots of these different APIs and uh, agents as well in the future. So like I said, 
MCP and APIs need to work together. MCP servers look and use the APIs in order to do that dynamic discovery, and then we can call the specific services that we want to bring in. So MCP and APIs are not adversaries, they're layers. They're layers in an AI stack. MCP might use APIs under the hood, providing a more AI-friendly interface on top. But today, you can find MCP servers for file systems, Google Maps, uh, Docker, Spotify. There's a growing list of enterprise data sources as well. So let's look at this in the concept of Copilot Studio. So Microsoft announced a number of weeks ago now MCP being supported, although in preview at the time, uh, being able to set up connectors within Power Platform to call MCP servers that would then in turn call other uh, data connectors as well. And I'm going to show you this in a demo in a second, but let's pretend we've got a human. They're asking perplexity, like, is the earth flat? And that will be sent to the agent, the orchestrator, to understand what functions or what actions and tools to call. And that will be pre-set up as a, an MCP connector. And then we're calling out through an open API, the, the 2.0 format, across to our MCP server that sits on Azure Web Apps and then calls out to the Perplexity API to then return the results back to the human. Now, again, this is pretty cool because the MCP server doesn't need to know what models or how to call Perplexity and its tools. It does that dynamically, again, at runtime, which is pretty neat. So you're not having to say, hey, I want you to do deep, deep reasoning over this information because it may warrant, it decides whether it's going to go away and do that for you and bring that information back. So it uses the best tool at the best time. So let's show you what it looks like. Now, I haven't had a chance to make this public yet. This is a, a private uh, repo that I have on GitHub, but I'll share with this, uh, this with you very shortly. But you can clone this repo and uh, put it on your own GitHub. Make sure it's private. And I've got a number of different files in here that allow you to create the MCP server and the connection that happens within Power Platform. So I'll provide a full list of instructions in the next video and I'll build it with you if you like. And by the way, if you're up for that, actually put that into the comments and I'll spend a bit of time on it. So once we've done that, we want to head over to Azure. So I've got an Azure Web App service actually running within here. And the way that's configured is it monitors any changes into that GitHub repo and it actually builds the, the web app for me. Uh, so this is actually up and running here. And if we head down to deployment, deployment center, this is where we can connect our GitHub repo and all of the configuration then is done automatically for me. Next, I could create a custom connector either in the Power Platform uh, web app here, or I can do it over in Copilot Studio. But for now, we're gonna create a custom connector and we're gonna give it a name. Let's call it Perplexity AI, because that's the web service that I've got set up. Next, I'm going to switch on the uh, Swagger editor, and I'm going to copy and paste some configuration here that complies to the OpenAI 2.0 format. Now, this is on the repo. So under Assets and Connector, you would uh, have your own uh, Azure Web App URL within here and we've pasted that in. I'm just putting my host name in here. I'm just gonna obfuscate this for a second just for security reasons. But on the right hand side, I can see uh, what post methods that I'm calling within here. And uh, there's no other configuration we have to do on this screen and we can hit create connector. Once that's set up, let's go across the test. We'll create a new connector does that automatically for me. And here we are, we've got our complexity AI down at the bottom here. Next, let's head over to Copilot Studio. I've got a pre-built researcher agent that I've already set up. So the next thing I'm gonna do is head over to tools. And you may want to leave the creation and the addition 
into the agent, maybe for a couple of minutes. Otherwise, it may not appear like you want it to. But what we do is head over or click on the three little dots to find model context protocol. And then you would be able to see your server that appears here. So we're going to fast forward for a second and just let it refresh. Okay, so we've got our new uh, customer connector. We're going to click on that. Now it's going to show us the uh, connection, which looks correct. We're going to hit next. We need to give it a name. Uh, we'll call it Perplex AI. Uh, we're going to just leave the description. This is used for the orchestrator, so the uh, AI agent, in order to understand when it should use this action. We're going to change it so it doesn't prompt the end user. And we can see some inputs and outputs here, which we don't need to configure either. What we might need to do is just to customize some of these once we add the action. I'll tell you why in a second. Purely because the way that the agent is working is it's calling different tools that it has at its disposal. So it means that if we say, ask perplexity, is the earth flat? Uh, it's going to call that tool and then uh, prompt us again for the prompt. So we don't really want that to happen. So we've got our action within here. Some super basic instructions, like it's a researcher agent just for this uh, this demo today. But uh, let's test it out. Let's just say uh, hi for a second, just to ensure that the agent is working correctly. Hello. And then we could say ask perplexity is the earth flat. Let's correct my spelling. And then what we should see is it's calling the connector. Uh, we've got the prompt. It's done it correctly, which is awesome. And then eventually we will get the response back from perplexity. So you can imagine you may have internal line of business applications or other systems that have APIs today. You could use MCP to call out multiple different connectors within an agent as well. And dynamically, again, at runtime, being able to decipher or understand what the calls and the functions are as part of that external system. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. I will do a deeper dive in this. Uh, a good colleague and friend of mine told me that these videos should be a little bit shorter. So we'll, we'll do uh, our best at that and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.